Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining 21 Questions with President Greg Finvez in honor of his first day with Emory. My name is Anita Pei, and I will be your moderator today. I would first like to extend a warm welcome to our 21st president and his family. And now I will provide a few instructions before we begin. Attendees will be placed on mute throughout the call. You will notice that the Q&A feature is active and you will be able to submit your questions using this feature throughout this session. Due to the large number of participants, questions that are not addressed during our time today will be reviewed for future communications. At this time, I would like to turn the meeting over to President Greg Finbez for opening remarks. Well, thank you, Anita, for that uh, warm introduction. And I want to start out by saying it is an honor to be president of Emory University. And on this first day, I wanted to meet as many people and speak to as many of the Emory community as I could. And so welcome to this Zoom meeting. Thank you. We'll get started with our first question. What would you like to say to our students during this moment and on your first day as Emory's 21st president? Well, universities exist to educate students. And so to our Emory students, uh, the, the first year students who will be starting their education here soon at Emory, uh, to returning students, to our graduate and professional students, uh, our mission has not changed. Our goal to, uh, to prepare, pre prepare you for the future, to provide the highest quality education has not changed. But we all face uh, a unique situation in history. It's unique for every one of us. And we're going to work together to continue that mission of the highest quality education as possible uh, through this unique time. And so your goals uh, shouldn't have changed either. Your goals to, uh, to learn, uh, to become experts in a field or in a, into a discipline, and your goal to graduate from Emory and really change the world as a result. Thank you. Why was it so important to bring students back to campus during a pandemic? So I've talked to, uh, to many students uh, at, at universities uh, since uh, this pandemic has, has hit the United States uh, at the beginning of, beginning of March. And uh, every student that I have talked to wants to continue their education. They understand how important it is for them and they wanna be back on, on campus. So our goal has been to try to bring as many students as we can uh, back to Emory, uh, but, to, but to do it safely, uh, recognizing that we are in a public health crisis. Uh, we are managing uh, that crisis. We're gonna to continue to monitor it. Uh, we know what is needed uh, for us to get through this until, uh, until the crisis is passed. Uh, and we are gonna work our best and we need uh, your co cooperation uh, to be able to work together. It's not any one individual that's gonna be able to do it. It is the Emory community that's gonna do it. Thank you. We received another question. How does the mission of Emory Healthcare fit with the short-term and long-term goals of Emory University? Well, there were a number of things that attracted me uh, to come to Emory and uh, I was honored to be offered this position and uh, to be here today. And one of those uh, is Emory Healthcare, uh, the Woodruff Health Science Center, our School of Medicine, Rollins School of Public Health and our School of Nursing. And what Emory Healthcare is doing today, what it has been doing since this pandemic hit, uh, what it's been doing for infectious diseases for a long time. Emory is one of the world, world's leaders. And the innovation that's taking place in the laboratories, uh, the innovation that's ta being take, taking place in the hospitals right now in advanced clinical care and some of the best outcomes in the world in treating COVID-19 patients uh, is an example of what a great university does. And it is a really a excellent example of what Emory is doing uh, for the world right now. Thank you. Here's our next question. Can remote learning courses provide the same high level academic program that our students expect? Uh, so uh, in March, uh, Emory faculty uh, and faculty at universities across the country had to quickly pivot to be able to continue uh, the semester. 
And uh, I, I remember uh, going through that time and thinking, boy, this, this is not going to work out. And it's, a, it's amazing uh, what Emory faculty have done uh, with uh, a lot of hard work in a short period of time uh, to be able to provide the quality education through distance learning uh, using technology. And we've all been adapting, our faculty and, and our students. And over the summer, uh, knowing uh, that the pandemic would still be with us, uh, our faculty have worked very hard in re-examining their pedagogy, re-examining how to teach uh, through distance learning and how to make it as effective as possible. It won't be the same as in-person classroom instruction. It will be different, uh, but uh, we, have, we have really focused on how to make that education work uh, the, best, uh, the best we can. And so it's gonna continue to evolve. It's gonna require a partnership of students taking the classes or faculty and our staff who are supporting uh, the education of our students. Thank you. Our next question. For so many students, the quality of college education is more than about what they experience in the classroom. It's about the activities, the friendships, and the community building that happen outside of the classroom. These unique experiences are what make college tuition worth it. Why isn't Emory reducing tuition if students are unable to partake in all of the things that make the college experience what it is? Um, well, uh, whoever asked the question uh, is exactly right. Uh, those are the experiences that uh, make, uh, make the college experience uh, that uh, prepare students. Uh, but at the core of it, it is uh, the classroom experience. It is the degree program. It is the education. And just as uh, we're looking at how to do that uh, in an effective way through distance uh, education, I've been amazed at how students are using technology to continue these fundamental relationships uh, uh, the, uh, that individuals have that are so important uh, to, uh, to college, but also important uh, to life. And uh, we will continue to work on that. We will provide the support for students. So we're gonna reimagine uh, student activities, how student organizations uh, function, because we must adapt, we must be flexible to be able to get through this pandemic. Thank you. So we do have another question. It says, welcome to Emory, first of all, in Houston. We are very active. We have a very active alumni group. Do you have plans once you get settled in to come out and visit Emory alumni around the country? Uh, I can't wait to visit Emory alumni around the country. Of course, uh, Houston is a city I know very well. And uh, I know there are many alumni uh, in, uh, in Houston and other areas of Texas, but I want to get to New York City and Washington, D.C. and uh, California, uh, uh, the, uh, of course, uh, Florida, where so many of our alumni are, Chicago, Washington, there's so many, uh, so many cities where you have had, had the impact. Um, I can't wait to get to an airport and actually <laughs> travel and, uh, and visit you all. And uh, we're going to try to figure out uh, ways, uh, ways to do that and ways that we can uh, gather and uh, do it safely during the pandemic. But uh, I promise you, uh, when this is over and I can travel, I'll be in Houston and I'll be in cities across the country and around the world to meet with Emory alumni. Thank you. What impact has the pandemic had on Emory and on higher education in general? Well, let me uh, let me talk about Emory and then uh, and then the the uh, the important role of of higher education. And uh, I made the decision to uh, to come to Emory uh, before the dimensions and the depth uh, of this pandemic uh, were known. And uh, I've been able to first observe and then uh, participate through the transition. And I want to thank President Stirk and executive leaders here for a very smooth transition and working, uh, working uh, to, uh, to make it uh, truly uh, an experience for all students and a place for our faculty and staff. And uh, one of the things I, I have seen is the dedication of our faculty, our staff, and our university leaders, the thoroughness at which they understand, I want to understand the issues, uh, the depth at which uh, uh, they work uh, to, to make these important uh, decisions and the analytical uh, capability that they bring, but also the humanity that they bring. This has really given me a sense 
uh, that Emory is a community and we all are all working uh, together. So I have been very Im impressed uh, with Emory up to this date and I look forward to uh, working with everybody here. Uh, but uh, this pandemic has also uh, shine, shone, shined a light on higher education and asked uh, some profound questions about what is the role of college? What is the role of residential college education if we're able to educate students uh, while they're at home uh, through, uh, through distance learning? And I think what we're gonna find is that uh, once that's, uh, the, the, uh, we we're able to be safe and healthy uh, after, uh, after the pandemic, the virus is under control, students and faculty and our staff are gonna wanna be back. And it's gonna reinvigorate uh, our love and our, our the deep meaning of residential college education. It's gonna be incumbent on Emory and it's gonna be incumbent on higher education across the country to use this as an opportunity to make college education, to make research even more impactful than it has been because we now see what happens what the consequences are when we don't have it. Thank you, President Finvez. And we have another question that's kind of closely related. While so much attention, rightly so, is being paid to the pandemic, please reflect on how current conditions will impact Emory in the future. And how will you use the pandemic as a way to reach Emory in a future post-pandemic world? Well, that's almost the exact question I was uh, asking uh, some of our university leaders the other day. So the, the, the immediate work at hand, uh, our business at hand, is uh, restarting the fall semester uh, over the next, uh, next couple weeks. And we're gonna get that underway. Uh, but soon after that, uh, I wanna start some conversations uh, across the university uh, with our faculty, with our department leaders or deans and uh, academic leaders. Uh, to think about what happens. Uh, this may be with us for another year, could be even longer. And how do we prepare uh, to take advantage of out of adversity that we find ourselves in uh, to rethink how we can do things better, how we can be more effective, how we can make the college experience uh, even more significant uh, for our students and more uh, and open up new opportunities uh, for our faculty, both in the classroom and in and through their research. Thank you. And here's our next question. How do we move forward with one Emory, the university's strategic framework? Is it still relevant? So one Emory is the uh, strategic framework uh, the university has adopted. And the answer is not only is it more, uh, is it still relevant, I would argue it is even more relevant because what are the the four pillars of one emory first is faculty excellence uh, that is the the heart of a university is the uh, what our faculty do and strive for excellence uh, the second is to be able to to be a, a destination uh, for learning and uh, as we've talked about previously we now see what happens when we can't be a destination for every student and so we're, we're going to look at how do we make uh, the Emory education experience uh, even better, even having even uh, more impact on our students and on their lives. And then the, uh, the most advanced research, uh, uh, whether it's understanding uh, the humanities, uh, the social sciences, uh, uh, there are so many questions uh, uh, that could be asked uh, as a result of uh, what we're going through now. Uh, so, many, uh, so many questions that go to the heart of the human experience. And then so many questions about science uh, and the role of science and what does it mean for modern life and how do we use it to guide our future. So that is even more important than when uh, the third uh, pillar of One Emory was developed. And then finally, the fourth pillar, be part of Atlanta. Uh, that was another aspect of Emory that attracted Carmel, my wife Carmel and, and I. Uh, we want to be part of Atlanta, a, a, a large, a diverse, a dynamic city. And Emory, as an important institution in the city of Atlanta, uh, needs to be more part of Atlanta and a contributor to Atlanta. And uh, with uh, the results, of, with the pandemic, uh, with the, uh, the striving for racial justice and social justice, uh, there is not a more important time for Emory to be part of Atlanta as its one Emory plan has, has called for. 
Thank you. Our next question is really about the connections here. So it says, how do you plan to meet and foster connections with students, faculty this semester, given the remote format? Uh, well, let's see, in February of this year, I had never heard of Zoom. <laughs> and, uh, and I think I've become a little bit of a Zoom expert as, uh, as everybody watching right now has. And it's, 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 it's kind of amazing. Uh, I'm now here my first day as president. Uh, there are a few people here that we're, we're getting, getting back to work. And uh, it's almost been seamless in r having met and worked with people remotely, because I was not here. We were using Zoom. And now seeing them for the fir first, uh, the first time, it's like we've already made connections. Uh, we've already worked together. We're already starting to develop, uh, develop friendships. And so I'm looking forward to doing that. I miss the one-on-one uh, -on -one connections. I miss uh, going to student events. I miss uh, uh, meeting with faculty at faculty meetings and, and school, uh, school events. Uh, but we're figuring, uh, humans are adaptable. Uh, they are creative. And we're figuring this out. And so I'm going to, I'm going to be looking at doing uh, the same thing with just a different means uh, for the moment and uh, relishing the time that we can spend more time in face to face uh, communications and interaction and working together. Thank you. So um, I think you may have brought this up earlier, but how do you see the state of the humanities in the coming years. Um, so, what has uh, this pandemic uh, shown, among other things, is what does it mean to be human? Uh, how do we understand the relationship uh, to each other, uh, to our society, uh, to culture? Uh, so many of those questions uh, get uh, re-asked and need to be re-answered. And uh, through our history, uh, through understanding our, our cultures, through our writings, through literature, uh, that is part of the education. That is part of the scholarship that takes place. And we are always reinventing our understanding of ourselves, but building on the knowledge and the framework and the expertise of those who have come before us. So it is a never ending project to understand uh, the mysteries of the human experience because we are always challenged with, uh, with new, uh, new problems, new ways of doing things, uh, new ways that we should be uh, doing things. And that is the fundamental role of the humanities. And uh, liberal arts universities are the unique institutions uh, where we can explore those questions, uh, we can challenge each other, where we can challenge ourselves, and through that come away with an education uh, as we think through, uh, think through all those uh, critical issues. Thank you. And so you mentioned our faculty earlier. So what would you like to say to members of the Emory faculty on your first day as president? Well, faculty are the heart of a great university and uh, you are one of the reasons uh, that I'm here today. Uh, you are one of the reasons I have, uh, have uh, relished this opportunity uh, to be at, at Emory. Uh, the quality of the research you do, the teaching that you do, uh, is re renowned in higher education, renowned around the world. And uh, my, my, my role as president is uh, how, do we, how do we do things better? How do I help you? How do we support the excellent work that you're doing through your research and through, uh, through your teaching and through, through your service? And uh, so faculty, as I said, are at the heart of the university. I look forward to uh, meeting as many of you, I've corresponded with a few of you, uh, have been involved with uh, Zoom calls, and I will uh, continue to that. Continue that, and I want to hear from you about uh, what we need to be working on here at Emory. Thank you. So, in light of some of the things that have happened in the news lately, the Coalition of Black Organizations and Clubs, and the leaders of the Young Democrats released letters to the university over the summer regarding anti-Black racism about Emory's history and about policing. Can you share a little bit about the follow-up conversations that, that have occurred and what have you observed thus far? Uh, so I, 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 I will share uh, where we are working with our, our students and the leaders of the student organizations, but uh, let me uh, place this in some, uh, in some context uh, about uh, our, uh, the recent uh, the history and these recent events. And I think the world uh, was shocked uh, by the murder of George Floyd uh, that brought to 
so many Americans, uh, anti-black violence uh, that takes place uh, by police and, and by others. Here in Georgia, uh, with Ahmed Arbery, uh, Rayshard Brooks, uh, there are too many uh, black men and women uh, who have been killed by racist uh, and hate-filled uh, violence. And this is a struggle uh, that uh, America has, uh, has had to deal with. Uh, and, and continues to need to deal with uh, since, uh, since its founding. And here in Atlanta, uh, with its special role as the cradle of the civil rights movement uh, more than 50 years ago, uh, Emory plays an important role uh, as an institution uh, here in Atlanta. And uh, so beginning uh, in June, uh, with, uh, with people standing up uh, for justice, uh, people standing up against hatred, uh, we heard from our students here at Emory and the uh, leaders of the black student organizations and other organizations uh, that you mentioned. And uh, the leaders of the university uh, uh, have been uh, meeting with the students and uh, I've been participating in them. Uh, we've been uh, corresponding with them as follow-ups uh, to our meetings on a number of issues. I'll, I'll, I'll say a, a few words about those. Uh, but I'm, next week, I'll be speaking more uh, about uh, the specifics and the actions uh, that are needed uh, around policing, around uh, free speech and open expression, uh, around uh, the spaces for our, our student organizations, and around the history uh, of Emory University, university uh, founded in the South before the Civil War, uh, having dealt with uh, many of the struggles that uh, continue and how we recognize our history, how we understand our history, and what we decide uh, to celebrate. So I'll have some uh, more specific actions uh, that I'll be talking about uh, next week, and I look forward to uh, the continued dialogue and the work that we need to do together. Thank you. So we'll pivot back a little bit to bringing the students back to campus. It says, do you feel like Emory is prepared to keep those returning to campus safe? So I've had the opportunity to work at more than one university uh, during this pandemic uh, and have talked with a uh, number of presidents of other universities uh, that are asking the question, uh, how are we gonna bring students, faculty and staff back safely in the middle of a pandemic with a uh, infectious disease that's very transmissible? And uh, I, I have to say to, uh, to the Emory community, I believe this university is as well prepared as any university is in the country. Uh, because the dedication of uh, the, the staff here and the leadership uh, to safety, but also and especially the expertise of Emory Healthcare and the Woodruff Health Science uh, Center, uh, the faculty who are experts in public health, um, one of the top schools of public health. We are right next door to the CDC with the expertise uh, that we can draw upon, uh, with the, the researchers and the clinicians and the physicians that are working on treatments on how to do testing, uh, which is gonna be critical to, uh, to a safe return. And uh, I, as I said, I think we're as well prepared uh, with our protocols, uh, with our testing, with the contact tracing, uh, how we will be providing health care to, uh, to students uh, uh, who test, if they test positive, uh, if there's an illness. Uh, we're going through tabletop exercises to make sure we have all the steps down and we try to anticipate as much of the unanticipated. But it's also going to require your work. Uh, we're walk I'm walking around with masks. Uh, this is why uh, Anita and I are in separate rooms in the same building. When we're in the same room, we have to be masked. Um, we have to maintain social distancing. We have to watch uh, personal hygiene. And uh, it's, uh, this is not a uh, pandemic that will be dealt with with a, a, single, uh, a single drug or a single pill or a vaccine. Uh, at this point, it all depends on each and every one of us. And I think uh, the university is prepared and you all need to be prepared as we start to start to come back to campus. Thank you. So how does your career as a structural engineer affect your perspective on higher education? Um, 
Well, uh, th that's, a, that's an interesting question. Of course, uh, education um, may have different uh, flavors to it, but it's at the fundamental at the core of it is uh, uh, we have students at an undergraduate level for a relatively short time in their, in their lives, the four years uh, generally, and uh, we need to motivate them and prepare them uh, to be lifelong learners, to learn how to learn. And so that doesn't matter what the, what the discipline is and what the field is or what the major is. Uh, but the work I, I've done uh, in my research career, uh, looking at how to protect people and how to protect communities uh, from the devastating effects of major earthquakes uh, has been an interesting combination of science and technology, uh, but also so social sciences and ultimately humanity and answering uh, fundamental questions of who gets to be safe and how do, we, how, how do we make people safe and how do we do it in an equitable manner, uh, who pays for it and who bears, uh, who bears the cost. So it's been a fascinating combination, as, as, as I said, of science, of technology, uh, but also how does that directly affect uh, people and the communities that they live in. Awesome. So what are your thoughts on engaging alumni in the life of the university? So our Emory alumni, uh, 150,000 strong, uh, you are our ambassadors. And uh, we want to engage every ambassador uh, to, uh, to understand uh, how we can make the university better uh, from uh, your experience, uh, not only as a student, but as an alum and your perspective uh, after graduating, uh, to build the alumni networks. Uh, because that's a powerful part of being a part of a university like Emory is not only do you get an education, but you graduate and you are a member of a powerful network. And how do we strengthen that and strengthen your connection uh, to the university? I'm very interested in that. I, I love talking to, uh, to alumni, learning about them, what their experience was. It might have been a few years ago, might have been 10 years ago. It might have been 50 or 60 years ago. And so that gives you a sense of the, the history of this university and a path forward and the progress uh, that we need to make uh, for the future. So the alumni are an essential part of the Emory community. And as we talked about earlier, I hope to be able to visit you in person, but we want, I want to engage uh, as best as we can uh, over the next uh, few months. And uh, uh, soon I'll be meeting, uh, later this week, I'll be meeting with the alumni board. Uh, and that'll be my uh, first, uh, first meeting with the alumni board. But I had the pleasure of meeting with Jonathan, Jonathan Butler, one of the recent uh, presidents of the Emory Alumni Board. And uh, he was actually the first uh, Emory alum I had met uh, since I had been named president. And just gave me a wonderful sense of what this university meant to him and his commitment as an alumni leader. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about the staff. Is, uh, can you speak to the vital role staff members have played, particularly this summer, and as Emory prepares for the semester? Uh, so earlier today, on my first day, I wanted to, to meet with uh, 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 staff who have been doing exactly that. Uh, the, the, the incredible work uh, beginning in March uh, to move students out of the residence halls uh, to preparation uh, for students moving in uh, with uh, all these uncertain times. And so I went over to uh, the residence life office and uh, met with a number, a number of the staff. Uh, first of all, just to thank them uh, for their dedication to Emory, thank them for the work that they're doing with, their, uh, with our students, the compassion uh, that they have shown uh, with all the, the trials and the tribulations of each uh, individual student and, uh, and what they're doing uh, in the future, working, uh, uh, working so hard, uh, uh, extra hours, uh, mm -hmm. uh, conditions change and we need to adapt and it's the staff in residential housing who are doing that. But multiply that across the university, every unit of this university has had to adjust and make some major changes uh, to be able to work uh, successfully uh, through this pandemic and to prepare for sometimes rapidly uh, changing conditions and that falls on the staff to do it. So I just wanna say thank you for the work uh, that you're doing and I hope to get around as much as possible to say thank you in person uh, as we get ready for the beginning of the semester. 
Thank you, President Finviz. And I'm not sure if we reached 21 questions or not, but we are at our last question. <laughs> so we may have to do this again. So our last question, what kinds of experiences with community engagement and collaboration with a place like Austin will inform you on your approach with Emory's engagement with Metro Atlanta? Uh, well, every, every city is, is different, and uh, we did uh, work hard uh, at the University of Texas uh, to work uh, with the city of Austin. Uh, sometimes there are town gown uh, issues uh, that we have to, have to get through, and, uh, and, and we were able to do it. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, uh, to uh, meeting uh, Mayor, Mayor Bottoms, and I have a meeting coming up with her soon, to meeting uh, with uh, leaders of, uh, of the city. Uh, with uh, uh, nonprofits, uh, with organizations uh, that are all committed uh, to a better, stronger Atlanta. As I said earlier, Carmel and I uh, want to be in a large, vibrant, uh, diverse city, and we're excited uh, to get around to Atlanta as much as, as we can uh, to meet folks and uh, to understand how Emory as an institution, a leading institution in the city of Atlanta in the metropolitan area, uh, can, can be a stronger partner uh, for this city and our future. So we'd like to thank you all again for joining us for 21 questions with President Greg Finvez. And at this time, I would like to ask our 21st president, would you like to have any closing remarks? Well, we are just getting started. Uh, so this was a, uh, this was a way to uh, introduce myself uh, to the Emory community. Um, uh, it may, I don't know if we made 21 questions, Anita, we can uh, check on this so. later. <laughs> but I look forward to an, an open dialogue, uh, to be able to hear from you, to be able to communicate, and let's work together on making Emory truly one university and achieve our path to eminence. Thank you so much.